Okay, everybody, in Leviticus chapter 24 today, we are beginning a new chapter. We have just finished up looking at the Jewish feasts, all seven of those Jewish feasts in chapter 23. And now in Leviticus 24, it, it kind of shifts gears, and it goes back to some regular observances of the children of Israel. So it's literally going to go back to some of the regular uh, daily and weekly uh, observances as part of this. And I, I think this is a very important thing because we're going to see next time a discussion on blasphemy and how serious that is, and it, it kind of jumps forward. But right on the heels of talking about Leviticus 23, which refers to all the festivals and all that they point to and all the reminders and celebrations, and, and right before that in chapter 22, when we saw offerings will be accepted and not re, re, uh, accepted in chapters 21 and 22 that talked about the, the regulations for the priests and the higher calling that these priests were, were given as leaders, the higher standard, if you will, for them. On the heels of all of those very serious matters is a reminder to practice the regular daily ministry. So look with me here in chapter 24. We're going to look at verses 1 through 4, first of all, and then we'll look at, at 5 through 9. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Command the children of Israel that they may bring to you pure oil of pressed olives for light, to make the lamps burn continually outside the veil of the testimony in the tabernacle of meeting. Aaron shall be in charge of it from the evening until the morning before the Lord continually. It shall be a statute forever in your generations. He shall be in charge of the lamps and on the pure gold lampstand before the Lord continually. Now in these first four verses, we see several things. In verse 2, we see that there is pure oil that's required to, to make the concoction, the, uh, the fuel for the lampstands. Everything we're looking at right now is dealing with the tabernacle lampstand. And, and that lampstand is what would give light in the tabernacle, in that inner portion. And it, it was supposed to, in verse 3, daily be cared for. Morning and evening, it was a regular thing. It was not supposed to ever go out. They were continually supposed to maintain it with the pure oil. They were daily supposed to, morning and evening, uh, care for it. And verse 4, we see that Aaron is responsible for this. He's responsible for making sure, as the head priest, that this is taken care of. And he himself has special responsibility as well. Now, we are going to see a connection to this in just a moment. But before we get to that, I want to share with you also about the bread. The bread. So we see that there is the continual light in the lampstand. It requires daily action to keep it burning, never supposed to go out. And then in verse 5 through 9, we're going to see bread. It both was to represent the people, but it also was supposed to satisfy some people. Let's take a look at this, to literally satisfy their hunger certain people. Verse 5, And you shall take fine flour and bake twelve cakes with it, two-tenths of an ephah shall be each cake. You shall set them in two rows, six in a row, on the pure gold table before the Lord. You shall put pure frankincense on each row, that it may be on the bread for a memorial, an offering made by fire to the Lord. Every Sabbath he shall set it in order before the Lord continually, being taken from the children of Israel by an everlasting covenant. And it shall be for Aaron and his sons that they shall eat it in a holy place, for it is most holy to him from the offerings of the Lord made by fire by a perpetual statute. And so we see here in this chapter, uh, these verses, pardon me, a couple of things. We see that there are twelve loaves, two sets of six. We see the recipe, if you will, the the fine flour is to be used and how big these loaves, these cakes, were to be. They were to be in the Lord's presence to represent the people. We see that there in verse 6. It's on the table before the Lord, the twelve tribes represented through that bread in the Lord's presence. We also see the frankincense being added, providing a pleasing aroma. And we see that while the showbread, another name for um, these loaves, 
While the showbread is on display, it is replaced every week. Every Sabbath, fresh bread is brought in regularly. And that bread that represents the twelve tribes in the presence of the Lord is what sustains the priests. Did you notice that in verse 9? Aaron and his sons are to eat that bread in a holy place. And it's kind of interesting to get on kind of a technical uh, point. The 12 tribes were represented, and the 13th tribe got to eat of it. Because, yes, Jacob had 12 sons, but when the 12 tribes were allotted in Israel, to go back and remind you of Genesis, Joseph had his two sons, which each represented a half-tribe. The half-tribe of Manasseh and the half-tribe of Ephraim, which made 13 tribes. But the Levites were the chosen ones, the priests, who were, in a sense, removed from the rest of their brothers. They didn't get all the inheritances. They didn't get all the allotted portions. They got the ministry and responsibility to serve the Lord and to instruct the people, and as we've seen, to even act as, as doctors to a degree and even act almost as building inspectors to a degree, in addition to the sacrifices and, and the instructing in the law and holding to the law, all of those things we've been seeing in Leviticus. But they, as the 13th tribe, were called to be the mediators, the ones who made the sacrifice and represented the people before the Lord. They were the mediator, and they foreshadowed what Jesus came to do for us. And so today, I think it's really interesting that we see these two things mentioned. And I want to share with you a couple passages in just a moment. But today, keep this in mind. We see in the first part of this chapter, on the back of all of the feasts and all the richness that that pointed to, and the celebrations as those feasts would occur every year throughout their appointed times in Israel, there were two things that were constantly needed attention to in the tabernacle. And that was the light of the lampstands to be tended and continually, perpetually kept burning. And the bread, which represented the people before the Lord, but also which satisfied the hunger of God's called out ones, the Levites. Let's see what this points to in some other passages in Scripture. Real briefly, three passages today. If you look with me, first of all, in 1 John. 1 John chapter 1 and verse 7 says this, talking about light. 1 John chapter 1 and verse 7, it says this. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, it's referring to Jesus. As he, Jesus is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Living in the light, walking in the light, is a very important reminder throughout the scriptures. And that one verse points to that. Now the significance of light, we need it in order to see. We need it because there's darkness without it, without the absence of it. But I want to show you that at the end of time, something amazing is going to happen. We'll have no more need for light. Because spiritual light will literally be literal light. Revelation chapter 21, almost the very end of the book. You know, we call this little time together the Genesis 1 to Revelation 22 project as we walk verse by verse by verse. Well, we're looking at Revelation chapter 21 because it's very near to the end of the book. In verses 22 through 25 of the second to last chapter of the Bible, here's what it says. Then I saw no temple in it. For the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. The city had no need of the sun or of the moon to shine in it, for the glory of God illuminated it. The Lamb is its light. The nations of those who are saved shall walk in its light, and the kings of the earth shall bring their glory and honor into it. Its gates shall not be shut at all by day, there shall be no night there. How significant is the light which was represented in the tabernacle and then in the temple. But one day it will no longer be needed. There will be no temple. There will be no more sun. Christ himself, who is not only our spiritual light now, will one day be our literal light when we live with him for all of eternity. 
And in John chapter 6 and verse 51, it says this about the bread. That literal bread in the tabernacle represented some things, but we have a spiritual bread. Chapter 6, verse 51 of the Gospel account of John. Jesus speaking. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I shall give is my flesh, which I shall give for the life of this world. Isn't it amazing how the Old Testament foreshadows our Lord and Savior? It's what the Word told us was going to happen. These prophecies and these symbols find their fulfillment in Christ. Father, today we thank you for your Word. Father, as we observe the the, the things, looking at the context of how the priests are responsible to maintain those lamps and to have the pure oil, Father, I'm reminded of the purity in Christ. I'm reminded of the oil, Lord, so often in Scripture representing your Spirit. We need to walk in the purity of abiding in your Spirit. Father, how they maintain the lamps. Morning and evening, daily, they had to make sure that they were keeping that lamp burning. Father, light is so important to our witness and to our spiritual life. And it will find its ultimate fulfillment one day in the Lord Jesus Christ. And the bread, Father, which had to be baked and had to be replaced and kept fresh, it was eaten by the priests in that holy place. And it also, Father, was not just sustaining, it also represented the children of Israel in your presence symbolically. Father, I thank you that the Lord Jesus is our mediator today and that his body was broken for us. He is our sustenance and we feed upon him. He is our spiritual sustenance and our souls can only be satisfied in him. And he has been that for us and will continue to be so for his people throughout all of eternity. Thank you, Father, for your word. Thank you, Father, for this time reflect upon it, to share it, and to meditate upon the power that is in our Savior, and to be encouraged. Thank you, and I praise you, Lord, in Jesus' name.